Welcome to Surviving Sarah. I'm your host, Sarah Bragg, and this show is a place where I get to cheer for how people are contributing to the world and be a megaphone for their story. And I hope that this episode will inspire, encourage, and entertain you to survive right where you are. So if you like this episode, give it a little thumbs up, and if you love it, click the red subscribe button below. Now, pull up a chair and join the conversation. Welcome to Surviving Sarah, episode 145. I'm your host, Sarah Bragg, and this podcast is a place where I get to cheer for how people are contributing to the world and be a megaphone for their story. And I hope that this episode will inspire, encourage, and entertain you to survive right where you are. It's that time again for another crossover episode with my dear friend, Melanie Dale. And each month, Melanie and I sit down and have a conversation about a topic that we are both surviving and that we could lighten up about. So one part of that conversation is here on this show. And the other part of the conversation is on her podcast called Lighten Up with Melanie Dale. So be sure to hop over there when you are finished listening to this one. We decided to talk about something really lighthearted and fun since last time we tackled kind of our big emotions. So today, we are going to talk about fashion. We talk about our fashion icons that we had growing up, um, some embarrassing clothing moments, our fashion favorite fashion season to get dressed for. We talk about where we shop or um, what would be in our like survival skill makeup kit. Um, we talk about even where fashion and faith intersect. It was was such a fun conversation and per usual we will be laughing a lot so I think you will find a lot of laughter for you as well so pull up a chair and join the conversation okay welcome back to another crossover episode with my good pal Melanie Dell hey and we are going to be having a fun conversation today one that when I saw it on the list of topics I got really excited about and it's about fashion and like beauty and all of that kind of stuff. Because we totally know what we're talking about there. Because we are style <laughs> bloggers in ourselves. <laughs> hey, my Should hair- we have brought in an expert on this one? Should I have washed my hair? Wait a second. I'm like four days of dirty hair. Mm, I shaved my legs, so. Oh, it got real. I'm nailing it. Right. That's right. So we are going to have a fun, I'm, I'm really excited when I looked at like, I don't know, the direction we're going. I'm excited to hear some of these answers. So I want to get started with um, thinking about fashion growing up. Uh, Were you into like, were you into fashion growing up? Like, were you aware of like styles and trends and et cetera? Oh, yes, Sarah. My fashion was just an extension of my creative spirit. And so I dressed like six from Blossom. And Uh, like, yeah, like every time I left the house, my parents were like, really? Really? Are you wearing that? Are like, sure. Every single time I left the house when I was younger, I had to have a different combination and like a million layers and ginormous earrings and a hat. And it, like, it was it was nuts. I mean, and I grew up in the 80s yes. and early 90s. And so that was just a very exciting time for fashion. Oh, yeah. Lots of colors and patterns going yes. on. And uh, yeah. I remember being in like eighth <laughs> grade and going, like, I had a color, a bright color pair of je- like jeans in every bright color. Like, Nice. I don't remember even the name of the store that it was, but I don't know if it was DoorDash jeans or Mm. started with a G maybe. Uh, Guess? Guess jeans? Well, guess there were guests. Giovanni maybe or something. But yeah, I had all of those. Oh yeah. Um, I remember wearing like really high-waisted, which they're back. Oh, they're back. High-waisted shorts that were bright color stripes with like those Mm -hmm. big old belts that were like. Big belt, yeah. Like four inches wide. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was thinking about like, my fashion, you know, style icons that determined how I dressed <laughs> growing up. And you just mentioned six from Blossom. And I think um, one of mine was for sure Brenda Walsh on 90210. I've never seen it. Oh, my goodness. I know. I And it was totally on during my my right. student years. I just never, ever saw it. Oh, my gosh. I can remember getting like. Which, which actress played that person? The uh, Shannon Doherty. That's Shannon Doherty. Okay, so I can picture it. Yeah, and I probably really um, idolized her fashion only because she had Luke Perry. Okay, I her liked boyfriend. her in Heather's. Does that count? <laughs> no, it does not count. She had the big feather bangs. Okay, 
And I just, and my hair would never do the bang. Like no. it, it, would, it just, I have a cowlick. Okay. It just wouldn't work to be like the straightforward feathered. And yeah. I just wanted that so badly. I never had bangs. I was like the only 80s kid with no bangs. Yeah. Did you try the claw? Oh, I had it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had it. <laughs> um, and then I moved forward to like Jennifer Aniston, like Rachel. Oh, yeah. Totally had the Rachel haircut. Me too. Yep. Not a great choice of my senior year of high school, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, I totally, I mean, <sighs> my whole college years, I can look back at the clothing and it was all like based on what she wore in Friends. Totally. And yeah, well... I'll t- we'll talk about it later, but yeah, some of her clothing choices are back and I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, yeah. The Rachel, the Rachel look was iconic. Yes. Yes. It so was. Well, I think I, I, I this is the segue cause I can think of some embarrassing clothing moments based <laughs> on some of those choices. <laughs> um, so let's talk about embarrassing clothing moments. Okay. So I'll go first with one and then I'll give you another All one. Right. What, based on the whole friends thing, I wore like leather pants. Oh, Ross Geller. Yes. Wow. Yes. That was like a thing. And I remember yeah. I got him from Express. I'm impressed. I mean, that takes a lot of courage yes. to yes. pull that off. And they were hot. They were Are extremely they? hot. Do they make noise when you move them? Right. All I can think right. of is the right. SNL right. sketch with like Jimmy <gasps> Fallon. and Leather. <laughs> <laughs> They're like Britney Spears was yes. in that, right? I love that one. <laughs> it was such a good episode. <laughs> oh my goodness! So yeah, leather. So I just embarrassed that I wore leather pants. Or okay. gosh, I have so many. I wore an entire leopard print dress to a like formal in college. Why wouldn't you? I know. Hello? I mean, like it was like strapless or what is it, spaghetti strap? Oh, and like there is no shame fitting. in that. Yeah, it nope. was all leopard. That is awesome. Yeah. That's, I You should feel good about that choice. Right. Yeah. Right. I have um, not one, but two nip slip stories. Sarah, <laughs> how does someone have two nip slip stories? I'm not surprised that it's you. Oh, yeah. That's true. Um, one is from more recent than I'd like to oh. admit. And one is from college. So in college, I was a costume design major, right? And so I have no one to blame but myself because I actually made this costume. But I... I was uh, Mallory slash Avril in City of Angels, and there's a scene where she sings a song wrapped in a bed sheet, and, and she's in someone's bed. And thankfully, it was not opening night, but it was it was final dress rehearsal, and I did not build the infrastructure of this sheet I'm situation so well enough. And so I bent down, and when I came up to seeing. <sighs> One of the girls got away from me no. and was poking out. Like were there, and there were people I'm watching. Singing, yeah, there were. It was it was final dress rehearsal, so it wasn't packed out. But there were a lot of people in the audience, and I had a nip out, and people saw on it. stage, and people saw my nip. It was freshman year, no. so I had four whole years at this university. The nip slip girl did like you were known for that. It was so funny because like I was dating Alex at the time and he was going to like get his whole small group from, right. oh. you know, to come and he's like, no, guys, don't come to the show. But did he see it? No, he was not there. <laughs> Please. He cannot. He could not have handled that. That We had just started dating. Right. That would have escalated no. quickly. No. Um, and then the second, the second time, and I can't remember if it was the same nipple or if they got equal time. Okay. I'm not, I hope they one got equal maybe, time so, so they were done. So maybe one is more like really wanting the limelight. Yeah. One is just a little showman. Um, so um, Anna, our oldest daughter, when she came to visit us for the first time, I had just moved to my new neighborhood and I was trying to show my neighbors how awesome I am. Sure. If you've heard me speak at like a mom's group, people listening, like I've told the story a few times when I've when I've gone and spoken at some places. So but um, I was I was throwing her in the pool and I had just gone and introduced myself to all these new neighbors. We just moved in. We've got this girl visiting from Latvia. Yay. Everybody like me. Please be my friend. I'm new. You know, so kind of trying to be extroverted and my nipple was just overly extroverted because I'm tossing her and I'm tossing her and I'm tossing her in the pool like look how awesome I am I'm an amazing mom yay and I looked down and my target bandeau top had utterly failed me like was it like but just one was just the one just the one 
It wasn't like a belt, but it was like one yeah. just kind of popped out to say yes. hello. And I had been talking. There was a man there and I, you know, had like waved like hi and everything. And I the, the, I didn't even notice that the nip was free, but I looked at him and he was looking very specifically at the fence. Like <laughs> not like, looking at me. Divert your eyes. Divert your and eyes. And that's what made me go, that's weird. He seems very focused on the fence, which good for him. Yeah. He knew what to do. Uh, and, and I looked down and I realized why he was not looking at me and it was, yeah, gosh, so that's two. Well, you know, I just literally had that life lesson with Sinclair. Like last week she was like, I jumped in the pool and my, like she had on a two piece and I was like, listen, for the rest of your life, you're going to have to hold that top when you jump in a pool. Yeah. I mean, she doesn't have anything like, you know, she's 10, but it was like, you know what? This is the price you pay as a woman. You have to hold the top now every time you jump in. Yeah. Or else it falls off. Yeah. My husband was so funny because my, my oldest is a teenager. She wears a two piece. And he's like, if you're going to wear a two piece, then you have to act like an adult in the pool. If you're going to act like a kid and, and wrestle and do crazy things and you're wearing a one piece. Right. Keep it covered. Yeah. Like n- nothing's slipping out anywhere. He should have given you that lesson. I, if you're yeah. going to throw kids in the pool. Right. Yeah. Th- yeah. I, I don't know. I'm hoping that is it. For my nips and the rest uh, well, of my I life, so they too, will but stay. They seem to be making an appearance in every decade. I, crap, you're right. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're right. right. And so now I'm in my 40s, and right. there should be an appearance. What's this, gonna happen? <gasps> no. You know what? Those it's like it's nipple watch. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're gonna hashtag it. <laughs> that could be a whole nother hashtag. But, so don't search that. Don't search that. <laughs> Don't Google that. <laughs> Nipple Watch 2018. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. <laughs> Woo, you're right. There's about a one appearance a decade. Yeah. Uh, well, but I will say gravity has continued to work, and they're lower now, so it would take more for more them to effort. come out of the right. top. Right. Because they just have farther to go now. Right. But maybe they're going <laughs> to feel that, like, pride like we do in our 40s, that we're free to be who we are. Yeah. Mm. So that could be trouble for you. Another one I just thought of was when I was in fifth grade, and this is solidified in like a school picture, Mm. was that you remember those charm necklaces? Yeah. The plastic ones. Totally. Like baby bottles. Yep. Like a little notepad, a little like notepad with a little pencil that you could write in. I had one with a whistle. A whistle. Yes. So I have, I need to find this picture. I'm sure my mom has it and she treasured it. Because I remember, and I can remember her saying like, are you sure you want to wear those? And being like, yes, like adamantly, like this is on trend and okay. I'm going to have it in my picture. Mm. And it was like Mr. T kind of layering. <laughs> it was so big. It was not just like one little simple strand. It was like big yeah. and layered, like probably four of them put oh, together. Oh, I pity the fool. I pity the fool who wears that's, that charm necklace. That's fantastic. Yes. <laughs> so many, many mm-hmm. fashion faux pas so many. that we can think of. I want to take a quick break from my conversation with Melanie to tell you about one of our sponsors, HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a meal kit delivery service that shops, plans, and delivers your favorite step-by-step recipes and pre-measured ingredients so that you can cook, eat, and enjoy. And I need all the help I can get when it comes to making meals, and HelloFresh is truly in my survival kit. With HelloFresh, I don't have to spend time meal planning, but instead I get to spend time on all the other things that I need to do. HelloFresh makes family dinners fuss-free with recipes that are picky, eater and kid tested approved and HelloFresh makes cooking so easy that even my non-culinary skilled husband can do it. All the ingredients came in a pre-measured handy labeled meal kits which made it so easy for me to figure out. Everything about the experience made me feel confident in the kitchen because not only were the recipes simple but they were just outlined on such pretty pictured step-by-step instructional cards. One thing I personally love with HelloFresh is that I get to try different recipes, things that I would not normally attempt to cook. And the family favorite this time was the cherry drizzled pork chops. My kids asked for more, you guys, and they're picky and they loved it. HelloFresh helped us get out of the recipe rut and cook something new that our whole family enjoyed. And we have loved every recipe we have tried. So if you travel or if you don't feel confident in the kitchen or if you just need to get out of a cooking rut, you have to try HelloFresh. It is Bragg family approved. So for a total of $60 off, that's $20 off your first three boxes, visit HelloFresh.com slash surviving 60 and enter surviving 60 at checkout that's like receiving six meals for free 
Again, for a total of $60 off, that's $20 off your first three boxes, visit HelloFresh.com slash Surviving60 and enter Surviving60 at checkout. Now back to the show. So one thing I wanted to ask you was when it comes to fashion, um, what is your favorite season to get dressed like which which season of the year do you enjoy the most getting dressed in? I mean, we're we're kind of moving in it. Okay. Right now like October, November, that fall time for me is um it's my favorite. I will say I'm a Midwest girl, so northeastern Ohio in October was like it was crisp and like layers that was my favorite down here in Georgia it takes a little bit longer to get to that and I really want to four layer seconds stuff. long yeah so um it's a little it's probably a little different now but basically that like crisp season when you can start to layer and not feel like you're a sweaty mess yes. I just I love that so I would have called it football season for back where I'm from yes. in the north but down here it's not football season football season is still hot Yes, I always feel so bad. Football starts and you're still like sweating. Yeah. yeah. No, but like I, I love layering and I love jeans with boots. I wear my yes. Doc Martens all the time, you know, so like I, that's my favorite. Jeans with boots, sweater, yes. lots of layers. I'm that way. How I think you? that I, I don't, I like summer, but I don't like dressing in the summer because mm. I just wear shorts and a tank top. Yep. Every day of my life. And I'm at the pool all the time with my yes. kids, hopefully with my bathing suit on. Yes. So, yeah. And so it just, I don't feel like I get to like adequately express myself through like style in the summer. And yeah. so it's not like an adequate reflection of who mm-hmm. I am, but I feel like in like the fall or like the, you know, w- spring really, when you can, where you don't have to wear a heavy coat. I don't like wearing coats, mm-hmm. but I like wearing like jackets, like a denim yes. jacket or my like olive green jacket. Your jacket game is on point. It's on point. And so I love that. So if it's cold enough to wear that, like the layering without having to wear like my like puffy, I'm freezing coat. Light layering jackets, not full down. Yes. Like not down coat with the huge hood and something in between. Yes. Okay. So what, what has been like, this is what I will splurge on when it comes to fashion and this is what I save on. Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, Okay, let's see. I I like a good pair of jeans that actually fit. And that's been a recent thing for me that I'm like, you know what? Let's invest in a pair of jeans that actually fit really well. Yes. Um, as opposed to buying three pairs and none of them fit me well. Yes. So I'd rather splurge on one decent pair. Um, I also, I, I don't own like designer stuff, but I own one Michael Stars white tank top. I don't. It who goes is Michael Stars. Oh, I don't. He. I don't I know that. Like t shirts and stuff. It, it's expensive tank top. I asked for it for my birthday years ago. I still have it. But it's, it's still in perfect lasting. condition. Right. It lasts. And um. And I always like to have one of those. I travel with one because it goes with everything. So if I ever need just like to throw on something with jeans or a skirt, like I've got this one Michael Stars yes. white tank top. Um. Like not spaghetti strap, like with the regular strap, and that just I like having that in my arsenal. Um, and then I like a like a good t shirt dress. Yeah. Um, my my favorite my favorite place to buy clothes from would yeah. probably be Free People. I okay. love Free People and Anthro, and so those yes. are my two. I, to- I totally see that in you. Go to yeah, and so there's there's that, and then on the opposite end, this is not a, like a high end thing, but I we talked about this. I love nerdy t shirts, so yes, my nerdy t shirts. I just bought you know Bohemian Rhapsody. Is is coming out into theaters near us, and I'm. I mean, I'm so excited. Rami Malek is starring as Freddie Mercury. I You're like. I'm all in. I'm all in, and so I splurged on a Bohemian Rhapsody T-shirt that has a picture of Galileo on it, and it says Thunderbolts and Lightning, very very frightening me, Galileo. <laughs> so I'm so excited. So excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I'm like you. Like I um I will buy good jeans. I went through a season. I mean, when I was in my early 20s, I bought designer jeans because it was my money. I wasn't like answering to anyone. And then we got married and I was like, oh, sorry. I guess I can't spend that on jeans. <laughs> um, and then I'm back into like, OK, I need good pair mm-hmm. of jeans. And then um, and so my favorite uh, store to buy from is probably Nordstrom Rack. OK. And so because I feel like I can get some nice quality stuff that's going to last me a little bit longer um, like I have a lot of made well t-shirts and mm. things like that where I'm like, okay, the quality is just going to last me like longer than a year. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll get like some tank tops and things like that from Target, which, you know, like my mom will say like, oh, where'd you get that? I'm like, it's Target. Like, yeah. and I'm like, it's just cause I'm always there. 
Like, right. I'm always at Target. So um, I'm kind of like you. Like I, I splurge on the things that I'm going to wear like all the time. Right. I'm going to wear, I mean, you're going to see me in some of these things over and over and right. over again. But you I, need I'd them rather to hold up. Fewer pieces, but more quality the older yes. I've gotten. And then I wear my Doc Martens with everything. Do you have you like do. a go-to pair of shoes? Um, I do. I have a pair of booties that booties. I booties that I got from Target. Like I've got to where I don't spend a lot on shoes. Hmm. Um, and as long as they're comfortable. So I don't, you know, I, so I get kind of picky, but this was the summer where I bought I, the last two summers. All I wore were flip flops mm-hmm. and I had these little gold flip flops from Target. Like they're like the cheap rubbery, but the, the thong part, if you will, is like uh, gold glitter. Ooh. And so there were $3. And so every time I'd go, I just buy another pair. Nice. I just, and that's all I wore. But this summer I was like, I kind of don't want to just wear my flip flops with everything. Mm. And so I got a cute little pair of sandals from Target. And then what is there, that new brand universal thread? I think is what it is. And then I went to Nordstrom Rack and I got a cute pair of, it's kind of like the booties, but they have the open toe. So it's mm-hmm. like a summer booty, you know? That sounds like it could be a whole other thing. But, summer um, booty. Summer booty. That could be a lot of things. That could be it. We've said Especially a lot of things. Especially you're talking about thongs, sandals. The summer booties of thongs could right. be like a whole and other watch. topic. We have a whole lot of things in this conversation. Um, and then uh, I got one more pair. Oh, I of like a, I can, how do you say this word? Esperella. Is that how you say those, that type of sandal? Or Esperia? Esperia. I don't know sandal wise. I'm just thinking that double L. Yeah, I just, it throws me off every time. Uh, but anyways, I got, a, I ordered a pair on Amazon. I okay. searched high and low. I went to nine stores. I don't, I don't shop. I'm not a shopper. Mm-mm. And I thought I'm going to do the conventional way. And I'm going to go to all these shoe stores. And I knew in my mind what I wanted. And I could not find them anywhere. Huh. And it was like a platform is the bottom. So it's like, you know, the same height all the way across. I like those. Me too. And again, that was all a, the that height was a, with none of the pain. Yes. That was a trend that was on point when I was graduating college mm-hmm. and now it's back. Those platforms but, are a short girl's friend. Yes. And so I've ended up ordering a pair on Amazon nice. for like $30. It was Good. great. I love them. Awesome. So those have been some of my like go-to places. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So I love to kind of always think about like, I love fashion. I love getting dressed. It's for me, it's sort of like a creative outlet. Like it's just a way of Mm -hmm. it being creative for me. But where do you feel like fashion and faith kind of intersect for you? Do they? Okay, you go first because I don't. So like I think about like, well, one is that it's a creative expression and we are creative beings. Oh, I like that. Well done. Ooh, Bible points for you, Sarah Bragg. That was good. Well, and I think, you know, it's easy for us when we get into older seasons, you know, and we, there's such a stereotype about us, you know what I mean? Like women who are moms and that they're just going to wear yoga pants all day. And so I always want to like fight the system and overcome (laughs) the stereotype and be, you know, and get dressed and be like, this is my creative outlet. This is who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think about like, I'm dropping my kids off and those, those people showed like got up and showed up dressed at this place, I should show up dressed at this place, you know, not walking in in my like yoga pants, which there's times that that will happen, but I'm not, you know, I'm not perfect. I am still want to try to work out. And if it means I have to go to the school before that happens, then that's what it is. But I think it's just, it's a creative outlet for me that I get to express who God made me to be. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, I'm definitely the person who's like dropping the kids off at the bus stop, like in my robe. Well, when you're dropping them off at like seven. I know. And when it's the winter and it's still dark outside when they're at the bus stop, then then I feel like jammy pants are okay. Yeah. I don't know. But I am like you. I work from home. And so I would say like I don't always look great. I And I love my yoga pants a lot. But I do try to make sure that I'm at least putting on real clothes regularly because yes. otherwise working from home, I could easily just totally never well, change. I want, I want my husband to see me like in normal clothes and with makeup on at times. I mean, he obviously sees me without makeup and all of that. But I also want to be like, hey, I'm still like the same girl that you married all these years ago. See, yeah. for me, I I'm better now than I was when we got married. 
I mean, when Alex fell in love with me, I was in the middle of a who can see how long they can go without shaving contest with my roommates in college. Uh, so like he fell in love with a girl. I feel like I need to give him like a blue ribbon award for right? like staying oh, put. Oh, please. He shaved his head <laughs> after I told him not to and he shaved it anyway and I wouldn't talk to him. College was a whole thing. Yeah. Anyway, we were not at our best in college. Sure. sure. And so I feel like, you know, what he signed up for, I have like... I'm I'm doing better now than I was. Yes. So. Yes. I don't feel like I have to perform for him because I'm yes. like, look at me. I shave my legs now. Yes. <laughs> I love it. You're like, I'm. we're good. We're, we're good. good. We're good. <laughs> Do you have any, you know, we both have girls. Um, you know, is there any way, because I know that your girls are, you have one that's a step ahead of mine as far as age goes, mm-hmm. you know, stepping into like, Do you have like modesty conversations? Do you talk like I haven't I mean, we've had like some conversations, but how do you approach that now? Okay, I am kind of opinionated about this, but I think modesty when when it's talked about in the Bible, a lot of times modesty has nothing to do with the amount of skin covered and everything to do with how expensive were these clothes? Are you are you caring for the poor? Are you taking care of others or are you spending all of your money and wealth on yourself and and wearing way too rich of stuff? Like, so modesty has somehow become this like, oh, your shorts are too short. But I don't necessarily think that's the point. All that was being talked about in those modesty conversations in the Bible. So modesty kind of cheeses me off a little bit. No, I'm right there with you. Right? Okay. Um, Obviously, we have limits and, and... I, and I mean, I always teach my kids like we need to respect the authorities. And so at school, when there's a dress code, even if we don't agree with everything in the dress code, yes, we have to follow the rules. Rules are important for our society. So we can rage against them. But <laughs> ultimately, at the end of the day, we've got to follow the rules. So, um, so I, you know, and obviously I don't want my kids going to school naked, you know, so right. there's, but I'm definitely a little more freer about that whole thing that like sometimes I think the dress code thing is so ridiculous and it can be so unfair to the girls because yes. it's really hard to find places that sell shorts as long as what some of these dress codes are asking them to wear like what am I supposed to do buy my 13 year old girl boys shorts it, like we right we, you want your kids to feel like they're on trend with their peers and so there's a there's a balance I mean I don't want her wearing like you know showing off her butt cheeks some right. of these shorts I I yeah, we actually went short shopping back in the summer and I like hiked up my shorts so that my butt cheeks were falling out. I was like, this is what we're not going for. And I think she was so disgusted with She's mom like, butt cheeks yeah. that she was like, well, okay. That's a good tactic. <laughs> Here's the visual for what we don't want in the dressing room. Um, so anyway, I mean, because I, I, I have a son as well. And so I obviously, I want, I, I understand boys and I want, I want my girls to respect themselves enough to wear outfits that are not crazy um, right. and and overly distracting. But at the same time, I'm also teaching my son, like, here is how you look at a girl. Here is what you do with your eyes. Here's how you respect her no matter what she's wearing. So I think Stare it's, at the fence. It, Take stare the- at the fence. <laughs> that's right. And it comes full circle. <laughs> so, I, so I think we have to do a better job of parents of boys and parents of girls. Yes. And this whole modesty thing needs to be, I, there needs to be more nuance to this conversation. Yes. And so when I I'm agree. thinking about modesty, I'm going, how are we spending our money? Are we giving to the poor? Are we making sure that we're helping kids who don't have enough money to be able to buy clothes for school that they need and not just spending all of our money on ourselves? To me, that is a, the modesty conversation I want to have. I like that. Am I, am I choosing modesty with my my spending money on fashion so that other people can afford clothes too yes I like that I like it well thanks I know I okay think it, I think it's just the bible is what <laughs> right yeah well and it's like for me I always want to hit it the why behind like why do you want to wear that mm-hmm. what's your motivation like you know because uh, I think because if, if I were to ask myself that growing up so much of it was because I wanted to get attention I wanted mm. to be I was feeling valued that way. Like if you can just address the motivation behind, which I think so much in life comes down to like, yeah, you know, uh, that I think if I can start teaching those kind of questions, like, okay, well, why would you want to wear a crop top or whatever it is? Why do you want to wear this? Like, what is it that, you know, um, and their answer may be like purely like great. It's like, okay, I can't argue with that. But if it's, you know, something deeper then that's something that then we can have Mm -hmm. further conversation about. And with girls, I mean, 
I, I want them to be confident in their bodies. Right. And so I want them to wear clothes where they feel good about themselves. And I mean, I had a raging eat- eating disorder growing up. I don't want that for my girls. Right. I want them to feel positive about their bodies. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. It's complicated. It is. Okay. So one more question I want to ask you, you know, on my normal kind of show, I always end the show with like, what is in your survival kit? Uh-huh. So I would like to know what is in your like, makeup survival kit like what is it that you're like go to like if there's like three things that you have to like make sure you have I just got so excited about this it's so fun oh but three okay or you can do more than three I don't I don't want to limit your creativity okay all right my my makeup routine is pretty minimal and I think the older I've gotten the more minimal it is me too um I'd say the the brand that I like is Jane Iredale it's it's natural Um, it's, it's got a more natural ingredients. And so I like it. I actually don't even use foundation anymore. I just use a Jane Iredale, uh, press powder that I, it has sunscreen. Uh, it's the minerals yes. sunscreen in it. And so that's what I kind of wipe all over my face every morning. Um, and, and you have great skin by the way. Wow. Thanks. You're welcome. Aww, I feel so good about myself now. Thanks. Um, so that's all, that's all I do as far as like what's going on my whole face. Yes. And then, um, and then I, I have a Jane Iredale um, concealer because I have ginormous bags under yes. my eyes at all times. Yep, and um, so the concealer is really important. And then I love MAC. MAC makes a liquid gel eyeliner that I, I use a little tiny brush. And that's what I don't have it on today because I left the house ridiculously yes. early this morning to get here. But um, but I, I like my liquid. It's like a it's a gel so it's a solid, but yeah. it, it, you use a brush and I have, I have a black and I have a turquoise Ooh, I've that seen, I love. Yeah, I've seen the turquoise. Yeah, I stuff. love both of those. It just depends on what I'm wearing. Um, and they, and they stay, they don't budge all day long. Well, I need to look into that. Yeah. And then I use, I, I have always loved Maybelline. I don't buy, I do yes. not buy expensive mascara. You throw it out every three months yes. anyway. And yes. so I keep telling my daughter, she wants these expensive mask, $20 no. mascaras. I was like, no, yeah. you don't want to spend your babysitting money on that. Yes. Go with just your seven or $8 max Maybelline. Yeah, that's what I do. And that's, it's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's kind of like me. Like I, I splurge going back to that, like splurge or save. I splurge on my like powder Mm -hmm. and my concealer, right? Which I use Mac. Uh, I just started trying out a beauty counter, um, product for concealer. I'm not sure if I'm sold or not, but I'm trying it out. Okay. And then, um, and so then I do my eyeshadows, like a really just like basic, like nothing crazy. And it's also Mac. Mm. And then I, I save on like my eyes. So I do a eyeliner that's like Maybelline or Revlon, like whichever one I want to get at the time. Like mm-hmm. they're the, essentially the same. Um, it's one of those like you kind of like twist it and it comes up. Oh, okay. Um, so it's a pencil, but it's like a liquid pencil kind of. Mm-hmm. And then Maybelline um, mascara. And nice. I do like they have the one that's like that goes under your lashes. Like it's like a... a you know, it's white. You put it, it's like you layer. Oh. You put that on first and then you put your mascara on over it. So they look fuller and longer. Interesting. And so, and those are both like Maybelline products. Like so, or L'Oreal, they're both L'Oreal. Sorry. And so, yeah. So I save on that. And then Burt Bees lips. Burt's Bees, same. Yeah. Lips. So yes. it's like, literally those are like in my mm-hmm. little like beauty kit, like mm-hmm. five minute makeup right there. Yep. Super fast. Yeah. I like it all. I want to try, I want to look into your makeup. Yeah. Well, let me know what you think about your concealer. Okay. Okay. Now. That was such a fun conversation. I hope you had fun too, laughing at us and laughing with us and remembering your own embarrassing fashion moments. Um, I would love to just hear from you and connect with you and laugh with you in another platform off of the podcast. You can come find me on Instagram or Twitter at Sarah W. Bragg or Surviving Sarah Podcast on Facebook. And be sure to check out my new website, sarahbragg.com. That's S-A-R-A-H-B-R-A-G-G.com. I will have the show notes for today's episode with links to everything we talked about. But there's also a great thing that you may not know about. Every month, I send a monthly survival kit. So this is my personal survival kit. I include everything that I'm loving, what I'm listening to or reading or watching, and just some thoughts about that month. So I would love for you not to miss that because all the people who have been subscribers, um, they've been receiving it. And it's kind of been like a secret society. So I want you to be a part of it. I don't want it to be a secret any longer. So go to my website and sign up for 
for the email list. And in fact, when you do that, you get a free gift. My friend, Kimberly Davidson, she is at K Creatives on Instagram. She is a hand lettering artist and she created this print that is gorgeous. And you get it for free when you sign up for the email list. So be sure to head over to sarahbragg.com, sign up for that email list because you're not gonna wanna miss the monthly survival kit and you'll get that beautiful print. And many thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this episode. You directly support the show when you take advantage of the deals that they offer. Thank you for listening. And as always, I hope this show helps you survive a little easier. 